Everyone, hi, Bruce Muffson, once again, you know where, Sunridge of Nevada, coming at you with another video. First of all, I wanted to say thank you to all our commenters, all our subscribers, but I want to thank the people that introduced us to our next video, the group called Death Grips. Uh, because of you, we are shooting this video. We want to thank you. We want to thank all our people, honestly, for introducing us to new kinds of music, new genres, new perspectives. There's nothing we're not going to cover. We want to go after everything. And if you find it interesting, then guess what? We do. And guess what else happens? I become a fan. Shocking. So here we go. I want to always thank our good friends at Wikipedia because they're always so helpful. Here's a deal. For those of you that are just tuning in and who have a little bit of knowledge of the band, the band is called Death Grips. They're out of Sacramento, California. They were formed in 2010. The group consists of three members. There's MC Ride, Zach Hill, and Andy Morin. And by the way, MC Ride is the persona name for Stefan Burnett, who is their lead singer and does all the talking for them. Now, here we go. They are told as like they're trying to, you know, put them into kind of some kind of like form, some kind of box of what they are. So I hear this thing as they draw on punk rock, electronic noise, and industrial styles. And in fact, on the Wikipedia page, it still goes on even further. Experimental hip hop, industrial hip hop, electro punk, noise, digital, hardcore, rap rock, and punk and rap or punk rap. <laughs> <laughs> the reality is they have no genre because they're original in how they do things. And that's something I'm going to bring about, talk about later on in the video, but there is no category to define them, which I think is great. Now, um, we talked about the members, and the song that we're going to cover, it came from the, one of the, their albums was called The Powers That Be. And there was a second disc called Jenny's Jenny Death, and that's where the song On GP comes from, and that's what we're going to be covering. Now, I want to share this also because I'm going to bring this up later when I talk about the band further. They talk about this like their style. What is their style? Well, for anyone that's watched them on YouTube or anywhere else or seen them in concert, they have re received attention for their wild physical performances and stage presence which, quite frankly, I thought was interesting and really helped define them for who they are. Now, here we go. Here's the song. Now, the song itself is meant to be an ode talking about depression and also suicide, but I want to kind of highlight certain lyrics and explain my clinical impression of the song and where it was coming from. So it goes like this. Um, I'm tired. I'm blank tired of all the perks. I tried nothing. Everything works. And, you know, I get it. You know, he's kind of telling us from the very beginning how he sees things for himself. All blank life wasn't what it is. All blank life was just a bridge. Yeah, beginning to the end, going nowhere. I'm, 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 I'm walking, I'm riding, and I'm not going anywhere in my life. And then you got the bridge part. That was the chorus. It goes, I'll show you how to leave well enough alone. I'm not this world, this on cue world. And then it, it's talking about suicide. And then I fall back and cock new worlds. I fall out in throbbing swirls. I fall until I stop this world. I fall the blank off this world. You know, making my own noise in a sense. And to me, it also explains a lot about their music, how they fusion it with art and music. The understanding of their music is art equals music. It's not one and two. It's a combination. I like the verse where it goes like this. I live down the street from you, you've noticed me, I've never seen you. What, what he's saying in the lyrics, what they're all saying is that, you know, we're all invisible. And it's so true. There was a great book in America written about America from a sociologist saying no one bowls anymore. That the people who participate in bowling leagues are down tremendously from even 20 years ago. Meaning that we're more and more alone and that we truly are invisible. I'll give you an honest answer about that alone. That's why I like those two lines. On my cul-de-sac, if you had to say to me, for every person you could recognize, rec forget about knowing their name, just recognize, I'll give you $1,000, uh, I wouldn't get a dollar. I don't know anyone on my cul-de-sac. My wife has met some of them, um, maybe knows their names. I know nobody of the, of the three and three houses on either side of me. I know nobody. So it's a good line. I live down the street from you. Notice me. I've never seen you. We're, we're empty. And then he talks about death coming. Last night, 3.30 in the morning, death on my front porch. 
can feel him itching to take with me, me with him, hail death. He's coming. And then he goes, he turns around, hand me his weapon. He slurs, use it at your own discretion. It's been a pleasure, Stefan. Because he says before, my most recent purchase, old black rope. I'm going to learn how to tie it, hang it in my chamber. And what he's saying is that use it at your own discretion. In the end, it's all the end. Your life, death, there's no distinguishable features that happen when you have a life of unhappiness, depression, feeling suicidal. And then finally, it goes like this. Um, don't you worry, in verse 2, impossible for anything to be a big deal. Because that's how they define themselves. They don't look at anything in their life as a big deal. And it's kind of refreshing, but clearly been ages since life had appeal. Been there, done that. Been there, done that. When you don't have any kind of excitement in how you view yourself, that's what happens. Now, I, I was looking at a lot of interviews on them, and a lot of them start off with, oh my God, if you're watching this, be prepared. Don't be frightened. Don't be scared. <sighs> I thought I needed like a respirator, you know, to get things going, to calm my heartbeat down. The point was, when you watch them in interviews, listen to how they talk about themselves. It goes like this. This is from Zach Kill, who's the drummer. I want to challenge myself minimally. He has a mic, and I, meaning Stefan, and I have three drums. That's all he has. It's minimal. It's minimal. We're there to give you our presence. Anything that takes away from it is going to be more than what needs to happen to get that connection between us and our audience. Stefan goes, gut feelings. You know when something feels good and you know when something does not feel right. Everything we have done, we feel like doing. This is what we will continue to do. We're not into lateral movement. I thought that was so interesting. We want to move forward and make things better. So many people in life, clinically, they go... And, of course, you can't see me because my hand is up, but it's like this. You go here, you go here, you go here, you go here. You don't go forward. You get stuck in that rut, and you don't know how to go forward, and that's the danger. you got to go forward. Every time I do a video, I'm going forward. Every time I get comments from people, I'm going forward. You know, my agent slash producer will say, hey, how was your week? Always crazy, nothing unusual, but I always feel like a little bit, at least incrementally, I went forward. I went forward. I went forward. I like when he said that. Um, we want to move forward and make things better. We're not content to sit on our laurels. I was interested when I looked at some of the pictures of them. They have played all over the world, and what made me laugh was they played in Russia, <laughs> of all places, not known for openness and friendliness, one of the more repressive countries in the world, and they're playing a concert in Russia. Fantastic. Okay, both of them said how the energy at the shows has been amazing, and we encourage it, not think, and do what you feel like doing. Not overthink, not overthink, and do what you feel like doing. Trust your gut. How many times have we said this on these videos? Trust your gut, trust your instincts. Instincts. Don't overthink, don't overthink. Barry Sanders, one of the great, in my opinion, the greatest running back in NFL history, said, I took what the defense gave me. I didn't overthink it. Don't get into that habit. And both said at the same time how the energy in the shows has been amazing. We encourage it, not think and do what you feel, not overthink and do what you feel like. Don't want to say that again. And both said, interesting, we don't have expectations. We're not looking for the future, we're focusing on the present. I tell this to so many people also in therapy and in counseling. Don't just focus. What have you done today? What are you going to do tomorrow? Don't have these grandiose expectations that are unrealistic. Make it happen. Here, reality check. One day I started out with one video, and now I think we're up to 96, you know, 95. How did it happen? Uh, a lot of hard work, but I didn't get these grandiose expectations. Zach Hill said this. Listen to this word, folks, and keep on remembering this one. It's not contrived. We don't make it up. He goes, we're coming from super pure, genuine place. We don't look at people with big expectations about themselves. We don't expect it from ourselves, and we don't expect it from other people. It has to do with what our lives have been outside of music, what you've been experienced as a kid or as a child. This came from Pitchfork Weekly in August of 2018. Now... 
Another interview from The Third World, a short film about death groups by Finn Callen. Our music is accelerated. This came from Zach Hill. Uh, Andy, they said, is very, very shy, doesn't like to talk a lot. Most of our music comes from a negative place as far as the source of it, like a dissatisfaction with our own personal lives, but then ultimately turns into a positive because it's the, it's, that's why we are expressing ourselves, and that comes to a place of empowerment. We want the music to expand as much as possible. We believe in what we are doing, and we believe people will make positive gains emotionally connecting from what we are doing. Wow. That could have been Sunridge of Nevada's battle cry right there. That's how we look at it. When we do videos and you guys respond to us, we feed off, honestly, those comments are like lifeblood, like a life force to me. That's what gets us rocking. When we see comments come in, I, I get thrilled. I love seeing them like, you. I love them. Even the negative ones, I don't really, it doesn't really bother me, honestly. The fact that you, you got annoyed enough to write is a positive. So almost like I felt a connection to these guys talking. The struggle comes from us being reclusive or introverted as all three of us are like that. Makes sense. They're fighting against their better nature. We are very sketch on people in general. We don't really trust people. We're not interested in a lot of new friends. We just want to make our music and do our thing. They're almost nihilistic in that they've stripped everything down to the bare basics. This is who we are. This is what we're going to be doing. That's it. We're comfortable with ourselves, and we're okay with that. That's what we want for all of you, our listeners. Stefan said, I don't really look up to anybody. I don't emulate anybody. I'm not fascinated by human achievement. As I have grown, humans are not really my inspiration. I look more inside myself, into myself. I look more internal, internal struggle. Look more inside than outside. Wow, that's kind of insightful. For someone to say that and say what I'm looking for is my inner Stefan, MC Ride, and kind of figure out who I really want to be and who I am. I'm not into surface reality all that much. I am in a state where I am up there not putting a lot of thought into it because here we go, guys and girls. That would make it contrived. Two different people and two different times they each said contrived. We're not up there to give you the status quo. We're giving you our core. We're giving you our self. Okay. I want to explain something about this right now. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm really happy that we got enough suggestions that my producer said, Bruce, let's do, let's do a video on these guys. They're big. We need to recognize them. We need to acknowledge them. I love it. And I'll tell you why I love it. Because this band makes perfect sense to me. Just from listening to them, you see that they import, impart, I'm sorry, how they feel is reflected in their music and themselves. Notice how they use the word contrive twice. What these guys are to me, looking at their, at their fan base, are simply an extension of, say, Lil Peep, Triple X. They rap, or whatever you want to call their singing, about their lives, but it's real. It's honest. There's no artificial flavors or colorings. There is no need for backup dancers, flashy costumes, expensive cars, multiple divorces. They don't need that because their music speaks through them. That's their source of their power. How they see things around them in their own life, whether it's depression, suicidal ideation, drug and alcohol abuse, being burned by people, that's them. That's who they are. All three, to be, all three seem to be happy to be out of the limelight because for them it's the fusion of art and music that motivates them. My, you know, people say to me, like, man, you don't get up, you don't get too down. This week I had so much up and down, I've learned to kind of smooth it out like peanut butter on bread because I've learned how to kind of go with the flow. I smiled when I saw Stefan and Zach talking in a room just by themselves, smoking, calm, quiet, studying their goals, always looking to improve. That's what came out over and over again. Okay, guys. Again, I apologize. We do have some girl followers. This is what we want to see from you, our audience. Get away from the fake and fraudulent. And as long as you don't do anything self-destructive, move forward and be who you are. 
and not be defined by a label or a record. Haha, <laughs> record label. Even the lack of a shirt on Stefan is telling, or even to see this on Zach, because who cares? So he, so he, so he's he's not wearing a shirt. He's just wearing his pants. Is that really going to change your feelings about the live show? I don't think so. Who cares? You're listening to the music. You're trying to get into the vibe. We attach so much to our outworldly appearance that we lose sight. And as I said, of our inner pure self. No one knows how to define them. What a shock. Because once you define who you are, the stupid labels of race, creed, and color wash away like rain. You become pure and ideal and real, and people run to you for that reason. That's why people follow them the way they do. In closing, I watched multiple videos of their songs and at least a half a dozen interviews, and the music is fine and the interviews were low-key. Wow. No need to hype. The music and our art that we put out speaks for ourselves. Once they leave the stage, they leave their art and music presence and they return to their normal and, for them, introverted lives, which works for them. Find your core. Find your zone. Find your passion and be the person you were meant to be. This group is great. The music is great. The lyrics are fine. The physical presence is fine. The physical mannerisms and their style is all fine. All meant to be. All good. All good to see. They're happy with themselves. We want the same thing for you, our followers. P.S. I hope to go one day to go to one of their concerts. And if any one of you viewers have been, our viewers have been to one, could you please describe in writing the energy and vibe for me? I want to hear it through your eyes, what it's like to go to one of their concerts and just feed off the energy that they're clearly bringing together. Everybody, thank you for watching again. Bruce Moffson, LCSW, Sunridge of Nevada.